2017. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got another chart talk coming at you. It is Tuesday, October 22nd. It's 5.38 here on the West Coast. That means it's all the way 8.38 p.m. on the Eastern Standard Time. I bet. But how are you doing on this late Tuesday night? I think this is the latest we've ever done one. Yeah, yeah. You sent it to me as a joke, like, hey, let's run it now. Like, let's do it. <laughs> and I was like, uh, oh, damn, he called the bluff. Yeah, yeah I know. I know I called the bluff there. Um, <laughs> Uh, my market's kind of, you know, chopping back and forth. We haven't seen, you know, a ton of like any directional movement lately, but, uh, you know, it seems like, it seems like market's kind of quieting down before, uh, the election is elections now two weeks from today. I was listening to uh, Paul Tudor Jones on CNBC. He had a great, uh, he had a great, uh, little segment for like 10 minutes. He was talking about it, but he was, he was talking about, uh, the election and it's like the Super Bowl of macro news. So mm -hmm. it's like, just, just saying that it's like, it's such a huge development for the market. It would make a lot of sense for the market to not do much in the next two weeks leading up to it, just chopping around back and forth. Mm -hmm. With that being said, there's still pretty good action out there. So uh, let's hop into the charts. How about that? Let's do it. All right. So I got the S&P up here. We are still, you know, technically, you know, moving higher off this last breakout, you know, just kind of moving sideways. Uh, this, this sideways chop is annoying, but you know, more, more likely than not, it sets up the next move so that we can move higher. Now we can break this down again, this pre-election time. It's, it's kind of a, a crap shoot. Um, let's look at the cues here. Cues look very healthy. We saw a very healthy development today and that was a Microsoft breakout. So we see it's kind of chugging along. This has definitely been lagging the rest of the market. But uh, seeing Microsoft break out today, I was a little worried that this was kind of becoming a head and shoulders at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And this was if this broke down, I have a feeling like it would have taken NASDAQ with it, just such a big company. But seeing it break higher after being dead for so long, okay, now the QQQ can get some uh, propulsion to move back higher. So seeing that action to me is uh, very healthy for the market as a whole. Again, along with the election coming up, you know, we're just starting earnings season. So you see Microsoft here has earnings uh october 30th that's next week next wednesday that is so you know lots and lots of news incoming soon to this market so this i'm looking at as a time to do little you know very little mm -hmm. uh, we got a new theme coming in the market I want to talk about it real quick it's these uh these uranium names they've been ripping like crazy uh the big players in the space here's aklo uh this is sam altman the guy with chat gpt this is his company uh so you know we're seeing just seeing a huge shift to uranium stocks not saying at all to look to buy these now, not at all, not at all. But uh, in my 11 years of trading, the one thing that has been so tried and true is the theme. Stick with the theme. In the beginning of the year, it was AI. And, you know, we had all those SMCI and NVIDIA. NVIDIA is still going, but NVIDIA now is a, you know, a mature company. Like, I don't expect mm -hmm. the 100% the growth in the stock over the next year. If it makes 20%, you know, that's great or, or whatever. It, it's breaking out recently. Uh, but it's just kind of carrying the market higher. I'm not looking to those semi names for huge, huge, huge growth. Things like this Aklo and this SMR, this one, uh, this one got an Amazon investment here. We're just seeing these names start to come out of the woodwork. So definitely want to keep an eye on these ones. The big players in the space, like the CCJ, uh, this one's, you know, they've been on tears. But if these stocks want to go sideways a few weeks, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see them keep going and leave this market. But uh, I'm not looking to trade these things now. Uh, overall, you know, doing way less. We saw uh, the small caps come in to start the week. Uh, this is Monday's action. This is today. Again, chopping back and forth in a wide range. Overall, weekly chart still breaking out of this huge base and just kind of moseying on higher. You know, the high is not, didn't even realize high is not so far away in the IWM, just kind of uh, sneakily moving higher. But still, tough to get traction, makes these nice moves. Pulls back very harshly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of my thoughts on the broad market. I got a bunch of stuff to go over, but I'll uh, send it on back to you. If I can figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Here we go. All right. Send it on back. So, yeah, I'm definitely with you on just being, you know, very slow leading this election. Again, the big thing, you know, the book you have me reading, I forgot the guy's name. Um, yeah, don't Zway. fight. Zway. Yeah. Zway. Yeah, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the trend. Those are like his two key things so far. And again, with this S&P, it's don't fight this trend. 
but we're seeing these smaller and smaller pullbacks into this trend line where again it seems like we both were talking about like, like this target of 600 in the spy or spx 6000 um but with these tighter and tighter consolidations eventually you need some kind of shakeout some kind of rug pull to propel the market higher when you have these tiny little consolidations you don't really get that follow through and that's what we're kind of seeing in some of the other sectors for example you know financials we had this nice you know decent you know maybe month long consolidation underneath this little flag here and it gets this little breakout but it doesn't have the legs to continue and it just has to kind of pull back in and before it gets that next push higher and on my end, from like a trading standpoint, it just seems to be that, you know, the S&P and the Dow 30 have been kind of leading this market higher. And the tech names like the Nasdaq has been trying to play catch up like in third place where, you know, S&P and Dow are pushing to new highs yeah. week after week. And, the, and you know, the Nasdaq names are just trying to just get back into that retest area, which they're very close. You know, even seeing NVIDIA pushing new all-time highs, you know, was good to see for them in, you know, this third place spot. Um, but it seems like from a lot of the individual sectors, it seems there's this shift from what was this breakout stage for most of the major sectors into more of like a topping pattern or more of a bull flagging pattern. And it just, we'll see with how they kind of transpire, but it just seems we need some consolidation and just some patience before we see either the next push higher or those push lowers in, the, in the, those individual names. There's been no real fear, no dramatic selling any of them, just kind of putting along and starting to, you know, trade more, you know, in a consolidation phase, so to speak. So not really much of my end again. My biggest trade the last few weeks has been this mid cap trade where I got stopped out and it's pretty much right back where I was buying it a few weeks ago. So it's just kind of giving back, you know, that little breakout that was setting up. So nothing really crazy on my end um, with stocks on the radar, so to speak, but I have a few I'll go over. I'll let you kind of jump back in and then, uh, We'll take it from there. All right. So I uh, definitely think you want to be very picky in this market. I uh, I was trying to buy the pullback in this this ZS and this net to start the week. So we saw all these stocks, these kind of cloud computing stocks, really, really wake up. Uh, and we see ZS is sitting within this really nice uh, sort of base, right? If it, gets, if it gets above this 203 area, looks like it could really break out. So I was looking at this net and the ZS, very similar patterns. You know, I looked at these as healthy pull-ins and then they came in and they broke these highs. I got in and they just, they just, you know, quickly reversed and stopped me out. Same with this net. Uh, you know, they were looking good, you know, triggered really nicely. And then I realized they ended up just being liquid liquidity grabs as these things uh, still need to move lower and pull in, you know. But, uh, you know, watching this name for a uh, uh, definitely a more of a daily setup, it's breaking out of this big base here, you know, on some on some big volume. So, you know, still patiently waiting for this to set up. It was a little too early to that one this time, but, you know, keeping an eye on it. Had uh, uh, the CEG. This is uh, another example of, uh, you know, being selective right now. So I was in the CEG. I had a killer trade on at the beginning of the month. Um. You know, I was buying through here. I rode it through the four days high. I made this high and, and kind of reversed. And I and I got I pretty much dumped most of my position to this. You know, couldn't have traded any better. Very happy with how I did that. So then I see it setting up again where, you know, all right. So it has this little kind of falling wedge. So I missed this move. Kind of moves in higher. Pulls into the 20-day here. And uh, I was looking at the hourly yesterday. I'll look at the 30 minutes. It's a little easier to see. Uh, a lot of moving averages on me. So you see, like I'm watching this uh, intraday yesterday, and I, I see this tight little consolidation at the support twenty day sitting right there. So I buy a little feeler right here, you know, to end the day if it wants to close strong. I say, you know, I'll add through seven two seventy four, and I'm like, all right, maybe I get a round two in this trade. I just wake up and it just dies, you know. <laughs> so very very selective environment. I'm still looking at a few different things. I really I'm really starting to like this SCCO. Uh, it's a copper company. We're seeing metals trade trade go crazy. Um, you know, gold continues to break out. So this SCCO, I remember when it ran up, I was like, wow, that's a very, very strong move off lows. Really want to wait for this one to settle down and consolidate. So I'm looking around today. I see they had earnings, you know, positive earnings yesterday, gapped up, filled the gap. So I bought a little feeler, show you on the hourly. 
Uh, I'll show you on 30 minute, easier to see. Here's the earnings gap up, comes in, fills the gap, and then kind of consolidates here. So I bought a little feeler here. Um, this uh, 114 area, just against these lows, you know, it, since it's an earnings day, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. But you know, look at this daily chart, you can't really see. If you look at the weekly chart, you can really see how this one's winding up and, and it looks really nice on this. So I, I have a bit of a head start, might be early to it, but if it does want to go after that 116 tomorrow, I think uh, I'll, I'll add heavily to the position. I think it'll be really good in good shape for a breakout to these recent highs. So I think while metals are going, metals made this early, this got on my radar earlier this year. I completely missed this move in March and April. This is when the NASDAQ turned down and there was this huge move into the metal space like this copper. And you see what it did. It ran from, you know, 84 all the way to 128. So uh, back then the lesson was like, all right, I got to broaden my horizon a little bit. I have to always be where the best action is. I was, uh, I lost some money when the NASDAQ pulled back and semiconductors pulled back March and April. And I looked at these charts and I was like, wow, I completely missed the best action in the market because I was kind of stubborn and focused on, you know, the previous leaders, not seeing them slow down. So mm -hmm. now seeing these set up really well, nicely again, you know, if this broke higher, you know, I really, really want to be involved in this as, as we're saying, you know, look at this NASDAQ slowing down a bit. It just gives me a lot of similarities in, in, in the context of the trade. So keep a close eye on that one. We've been looking at this Shake Shack forever and it was annoying as hell. Uh, we see this huge monthly macro level. We look on the weekly chart here, tight little inside week below 112. So, and you, you look back at this level, it goes all the way back to July 21, three years. So huge, huge, huge level inside week now. So now if it triggers through the inside week, through the macro level, looks really good. So now we just come to find out my boys, my boys at McDonald's, uh, you know, some E. coli. So McDonald's stock on this news, uh, I'm trying to get a decent article up. Whatever, you see it. McDonald's, they have E. coli there. McDonald's stock is crushed. It's trading around 290 right now, uh, gapping down about 10%. It's causing Shake Shack to gap up. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in the anecdotal story of things. I literally, I got Shake Shack tonight. I got it last weekend. I love the stuff. So uh, I'm ready to buy this 111, 112 tomorrow. It looks like you're going to have to buy it for a breakout on an opening range uh, with this gap up we got. So, you know, again, not a ton of time for the breakout earnings a week from tomorrow. But I'll, I'll still try to be involved in this one through 112. That one still looks pretty good. I'm wondering if uh, this Costco, this Costco is really nice. Let me get rid of the 200 days so you can see it. But again, just strong, strong leader stock. These are the type of S&P names and Dow 30 names that are really leading the market. You know, we want it to be the sexy tech names, but it's names like Costco that are, you know, keeping us uh, trending higher. So this one looks really good through uh, 895, 896 area. Watching that one closely. This Caterpillar, you know, really nice run up to highs. Trying to turn these recent highs area, you know, this high into new support over here, kind of dip down. If this wants to reverse higher, I think that's a nice tight entry, 391.30, if it does want to make that, you know, secondary move higher. But again, not the, it's not like this huge base break. It goes back to what you said about smaller and smaller flags. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, now I'm kind of like uh, lessening my criteria of, of stocks. You know, this is the best I got. Still not a bad setup, but, you know, I'm very uh, knowledgeable about how this isn't the time to be pushing it. Uh, Sweet Green, I, I've been watching, keep an eye on. I wish I bought it off support yesterday. Lost track of it. Um, you know, nice little level, but I'm just watching the price action every day. And this thing, it just, it just has buyers like crazy. You see this little blow off candle here. I just keep seeing like volume hits with it. It doesn't want to break down yet. So I think this one is going to break out higher eventually. Just how it does it, you know, could be a little tricky. Definitely watching that one closely. Um, a new one. This rubric, RBRK, one of my buddies in tech was hitting me up about this saying a uh, big crowd strike competitor, really, uh, really good company up on the rise. So I saw this move when it eventually, you know, made new highs last week. And I was like, wow, this looks really nice. You look on a, a weekly chart. This is all just one big IPL base. Or you look on even a monthly chart. It's like 
this is all just a consolidation, really. Mm -hmm. It's a wide range because it's, you know, 20, 20, 25% range from highest to lowest. But it's a, you know, crazy tech name. And, you know, that's kind of the range it trades with. So uh, now we got a little pullback here. Uh, I believe the 20 day, no, 20. All right, whatever. Uh, pulls back to prior support right here. Looking at this 30 minute chart, though, uh, up through 39. I think this gives a really nice entry, uh, really tight against this 37.65. Maybe it makes a, a run for those new highs and then starts trending higher. That one's looking pretty good. Cart, cart finally started to pay today holding. You know, I've been holding this one. We all kind of got in this one here. And, you know, personally expected follow through to be more a little quick, you know, but, uh, you know, it's finally starting to follow through. Pulled back. My new stop is now below this 4150 area. And I'm just trying to let it work. You know, it's, it's again, it's a name that recently took out its IPL highs. I just want this one to trend higher to be involved. And, you know, it still looks really good on the weekly. Uh, we, we rode this a firm really nicely. So uh, original entry here, 40 verse 39. You know, rode it all the way up, got officially stopped out uh, on these break of lows here, kind of came in. Now I'm wondering, and uh, uh, the, the, the strength of knowing how these names trade, I would say, is really important too. Is like, I loaded up here. And I was all out of stock here. I don't need to hold on to this one because I know how wide it trades mm -hmm. uh, when it when it gyrates back and forth. So if this one might be setting up, you know, not sure. Going to watch this one closely tomorrow, these next few days. Maybe it wants to set up that round too. But again, like this UPST, we're starting to see this one. It's nice. It's flagging out. You know, if it gets above this area, it could go for round two. Um, I was watching this one today though. Just kind of looked weak. Every time it looked like it was going to break higher, just since sellers came in. So watching this one through that 54 half ish area, but you know, thinking that it's more likely that it breaks down in reality. Um, is that it? Uh, I'm still holding a piece of this MSTR did not add like I wanted to feel like a dummy. Um, I bought a feeler this day. So I'm running this out and you know, while it looks nice on a chart, I'm not really making any money on this. I have, I have such a small feeler. So it's more frustrating than anything else. Just mm -hmm. missed the ad through 200. It looks so nice. Uh, and you know, that's really it uh, on my end. Uh, I'll pass it back to you. Try and not do too much. Try to be very selective. But again, recognizing that you know the Super Bowl of macro is happening in two weeks, and then we got Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple reporting next week. Just a ton of news incoming. So we're gonna get some big catalysts for this market. You know, we keep saying it. Do less right now. Mm -hmm. Got for us, yeah, I got a couple charts, but uh, but yeah, so again, like the, the past few weeks, I've had like three trades. I had this MDY, you know, made some decent money in it, and I got stopped out of this New York Times, which it was like hilarious that I was even buying, you know, newspaper company. Well, I, yeah, I've been doing this so long, it's like we're going to fucking newspapers. I know, but it was just it's, again, it's just a nice, you know, nice consult, you know, nice flag here. Well, all Funny thing is, earnings are going to hit. It's going to gap up to 60. And you'd be like, I fucking had it, you know? It was just <laughs> such a, like, low beta. Like, once I got in, like, these intraday moves are, like, 30 cents. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this looks like, not it looks like a bad day, but it's, like, this is a not even a dollar move. Yeah, high to low, 51 uh, cents. Yeah, it's, like, you know. But so that's where it's like, I'm like, I'm trading in mid caps. I'm trading New York Times. And I was, you know, I tried to get in this VKTX. It, you know, it's it so tight these past couple oh, yeah. of days. And just relative to what this name normally does, you know, it's like trading ranges this name has been in. Like, there's some crazy know, wide God. days. And I'm like, look at just back to back to back to, to inside day after inside day. What's funny is that, like, all right, so VKTX has that huge day on the chart for months back. Mm -hmm. You know, that big day where it ran, like, you know, whatever, 50 points, 60 to 100. Mm-hmm. That makes it seem like these days are such small ranges now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's moved up and down five bucks, six bucks, or, you mm -hmm. know, 10% moves every day. Uh, like, again, you know, small candle on chart down three and a half percent. So it's such a hard name to trade. It just, yeah. it needs a catalyst or something, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to buy it when it's ready. I just, I just need some news, some something. Mm -hmm. It's just not doing it without it. Yeah. But I'm with you. It's frustrating. Yeah, I know. The good thing with this name, like New York Times is like lost whatever percent or whatever it was. This, I, you know, the first one we took it, I think you were in this one as well, but you were in earlier back in yeah. September and we all made like some decent money in it. And this one, it was such a tight entry that, you know, even like today, like down 3%, like I only lost like maybe a percent a half this time. 
So I'm probably even on the in between, you know, making money in it back in and you know mid September and then this kind of break even, you know, one or two percent loss. So not like very frustrated with the name where you know TMO was a much more frustrating for me, even though I was able to like nimbly get out of it, you know, once or twice, but it's just not ready. And that's where you know, looking through, you know, most of my watches again is QCOM. Yeah, you know, we're talking about these like tech lagging, the S P names lagging, the Dow 30 names, QCOM, you know, semi, you know, NASDAQ name, you know, just basing out here, you know, still set up nicely through this 176, you know, 180 area, nice base. But it seems like a lot of these names, you know, QCOM, even Amazon, you know, I've been we've been talking about this 190 level for you know, you know, I mean, a couple of weeks now. But I feel like a lot of these just needs earnings, like you mentioned, like for the VKTX. Like it needs a catalyst. It's not going to just be a technical breakout that's going to push it out of its range. So you have to just kind of be aware of that. Some other names, again, this AVGO, again, the semi name, you know, this 187 breakout sitting up nicely. We got earnings, not for some time. So probably sit on that one. Um, what else we got? No, again, smoke. You already spoke, spoke about Shaq. Yeah, a lot of it is like kind of like names pulling up to their breakout levels and just kind of failing, but nothing dramatic. No yeah, it's just they get up there and it's just like, you know. Yeah, I just, I just see it so consistently in the market. I'm just, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it just makes sense with the election being two weeks, even though we don't want it to be like that. It just, it is, you know, we got to just mm -hmm. accept the reality of the situation. Yeah. Today I was like, all right, I can't, I'm scanning through charts. I got nothing. So I went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of uh, like pipes and made an outdoor pull-up bar. Like, but like I built it into the tree, like in my backyard. So you can't even see it. It's like this, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'll send you a picture later. Yeah, but that was like, nice. that was the, the activity today was let's, let's build a pull-up bar. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> well, clearly the market's pumping if we're talking about uh, <laughs> <laughs> on trees. Uh, all right. I mean, I guess that's all we got for you guys this week. Uh, you know, we'll keep you updated. Next week is uh, the big earnings bonanza. And then two weeks away, we got, you know, the election of the century. <laughs> and uh, and then two weeks also. So Tuesday election, Wednesday, Fed Day, where they cut rates. So, you know, buckle up. But uh, are we gonna, that, damn, are we gonna, does that mean we're going to talk about politics next week? Oh, my God. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm going to guys wish huh yeah all right well you know my favorite part of the show coming up if you uh you like what you see like comment subscribe ask us questions we do this for y'all other than that anything else all i gotta say shake is i don't know if you saw the one video i like i'm way past this ai like trade but we've been i've been editing some more videos with with this like ai app and the last one i did uh, I posted like on Saturday, like at eight o'clock, where like I don't think anyone's gonna really see it. Most of you aren't checking our Instagram on the weekends, but like it's a clip of you, but I voiced it over with like a concerned, like scary guy. So he's like, "Engulfing bars are very scary," and you should. <laughs> it's like I was, I was showing Ryan; he was like cracking up. Ryan, and it's yeah. our videos, and I'm like, I don't think Shake's gonna see this on Saturday, but I think it's like just funny. So it's like yeah. the one time I'm using AI to like dub yeah. your voice in like a scary. Yeah. Nice. Very Love. cautious voice. Look at us, trading yeah. experts. <laughs> Through the future. All right. All right. That's it. Uh, Tuesday night chart talk. Late night. Success. All right. Other than that, that's it. We'll see you guys next week. If you think you're going to get rich overnight trading, we're not for you. If you don't want to read daily or weekly to improve upon yourself, we're not for you. If you're not interested in saving weekly and building your accounts for the long term, we're not for you. If you're not looking to improve yourself daily, we're not for you. If you do want to build wealth for the long term, read weekly, save weekly, do all the right things for the long game, then we might be for you.